Do you know what happens to your body during a 5k? From your muscle movements to your mood, lots of things change when you run. So we're here to explain the physiology of a 5k whilst running one. First things first, and I know it sounds obvious, but when you start a 5k, your muscles start working. Even if you've just done a warm up, you're still essentially moving your body from a resting into an active state, from not running into running. And so muscles across your whole body are called into action to propel you forward. There are lots of key muscle groups used when you start running. Hip flexors, calves, quads, hamstrings, glutes, abdominal muscles, and some upper body muscles are used too. As you probably guessed already, the muscles in your legs do most of the leg work when it comes to running. And the quadriceps, four big powerful muscles that make up the majority of your thigh, are really important. The names of the four are on screen now. They're quite a mouthful. Quads flex the hip and extend the knee, helping to stabilize and absorb the impact as your feet land on the ground. By the way, when your feet are in contact with the ground, this is known as the stance phase of the movement. From here, you enter the swing phase of your run, where your feet are in the air. The quads help to drive the leg through during this phase. The hamstrings are three large muscles that run down the back of your thigh. Whilst you run, they help control hip and knee movement in the later stages of the swing phase, as well as then assisting in the push-off phase. And again, their names are quite long. It's also important to know that muscles never work in isolation. For movement at every joint, like the knee, there will be an agonist muscle and an antagonist muscle. The agonist will be the main muscle to perform a certain action. So to straighten the knee, the quad muscles will be the agonist and they will contract concentrically under tension that means they will be shortening whereas the hamstring will be the antagonist and they will lengthen under tension and they will contract eccentrically now your main calf muscles the gastrocnemius and the soleus also play a huge role in getting you moving for a run the gastrocnemius flexes the knee and plantar flexes the foot to point it down thanks to its attachment points just above the knee joint it has two heads the medial and the lateral and they will travel down the back of the lower leg being made up of predominantly fast twitch muscle fibers it is capable of producing huge amounts of power and forward propulsion when you run producing in fact the most amount of power when your knee is straight or almost straight so your soleus is wider and flatter and sits deeper than the gastrocnemius the soleus is more of a slow twitch muscle fibre so it's more of an endurance muscle in the way that it works compared to the gastrocnemius and you'll feel it if you do like a bent legged calf stretch for example. Both of these calf muscles then merge to form the Achilles tendon which attaches to the back of the heel bone. Your calf muscles absorb the impact from landing and help propel you forward from the ground but there will also be muscles working in the front of your shin, your tibialis anterior being the antagonist muscle in this movement and it will help pull your foot up towards your shin, especially useful during the swing phase of running. Honourable mention, they're actually also very important as well, goes to the abdominal muscles, your abs. They're needed from the moment you start running to stabilise and control the pelvis and the trunk in order to give you a solid foundation from which all of the other muscles previously mentioned can act from. And plus, it's always a plus not to fall over whilst you're running. While obviously not as important as the legs, your upper body muscles, especially in your back and shoulders, can help counteract the running through motion, especially to help drive you forward efficiently, maintain your balance and build your momentum. Also, think about maintaining a good posture with your running, otherwise the intercostal muscles between your ribs or your neck muscles will start to work extra hard to help you with your breathing. Remember that your arm drive will directly impact your leg drive. Think hill sprints. Basically, your muscles do loads of work when you run 5k or any distance for that matter. So it's a good incentive to make sure that you keep up with your strength and conditioning work to keep them in good nick. I'm saying that for myself as much as anyone else. <laughs> Yeah, because runners are famous for loving strength and conditioning. If you want to learn more about how SNC can make you a stronger, more injury proof runner, then make sure you check out our video. During a 5k, your heart, another muscle, as well as your lungs also step up a gear. Yeah, these two organs are pretty essential for life and play a major role in helping you run efficiently. Your lungs bring oxygen into the body for energy. When you run a 5k or do any exercise and your muscles work harder, your body uses more oxygen to create energy in the muscles, so your breathing has to increase to deliver more oxygen to the lungs quicker. You'll notice this when, not too surprisingly, you get out of breath. For tips on how to breathe properly while running, including nose and mouth breathing, then watch this video here. Let's just say I did the experimentation so you don't have to. 
Once your body has this oxygen, your heart delivers it via hemoglobin in the red blood cells in your bloodstream to the muscles doing the running work. To deliver oxygen quickly, your heart contracts faster to increase blood circulation, which gives you a higher heart rate that stays elevated for as long as you're out running. So that's why you'll notice your pulse increase soon after you start running. Interestingly though, there's something called VO2 kinetics, which essentially is how fast your body responds physiologically to exercise or running. So this means that your heart rate won't necessarily leap up exactly to where it needs to be straight away. It will jump up and then gradually increase a bit more over the next few minutes. Now, to be able to run properly or do anything at all really, your body needs energy. When you're running, your muscles use carbohydrates and fats as fuel. Carbs are broken down into simple sugars called glucose, which your body then pulls from the bloodstream to use as energy whilst you run. As you continue running and this glucose store runs out, your body then turns to the liver and muscles to get glucose. This is known as glycogen. The rate at which glycogen is depleted depends on the duration and the intensity of your run as well as how much is stored in the body so you'll likely need more fuel for a flat out 5k time trial than you would for a chatty park run you shouldn't need to fuel mid run for a 5k but if you are running for longer than 60 minutes it might be worth considering taking on 30 to 60 grams of quick release carbohydrates like from an energy gel to help sustain you every hour Ooh, it's windy you also probably notice that you start to sweat when you run, even on a cold day. That's because when your body uses glycogen and oxygen, your body's temperature rises. So your sweat glands have to release moisture, i.e. sweat, in order to cool you down and stop you from overheating. Now let's look a bit more at the mind. As you're running your 5K, your body will start to release substances known as endocannabinoids, which is responsible for that runner's high feeling, which until recently was attributed to endorphins. It's basically that post 5K or post exercise feeling of euphoria that helps you feel good and relax. Win-win. This release can also stop you from feeling muscle pain when you run, which can help keep you going to the end. Now, a question for you. Have you ever had a great runner's high? Is there one that you want to tell us about? Let me know in the comments. I seem to remember when I first started running, I would always get it around 40 minutes into a run, but when does it happen for you? Let me know in the comments. And do hit subscribe whilst you're there. And what about after your 5K? What does your body do then? Well, within about 10 minutes of finishing your 5K, you'll notice that your breathing returns back to normal and your heart rate drops back down to its regular resting rate. And thanks to those feel-good endocannabinoids released by your body during your run, which we mentioned earlier, you'll feel more energised and be in a better mood, which is always, always a good thing. Your brain will also thank you for that. Yep, following a run, you'll experience neurological perks, such as improved memory and focus, and a better ability to switch between tasks, which is especially helpful in a working day. Longer term, regular running and cardiovascular exercise in general can help stimulate production of new brain cells through a process called neurogenesis, which can overall help your brain's performance. In the few days following a 5K, your muscles will also undergo some changes. So running and in particular exercise with a new stimulus called functional overreaching creates tiny micro tears in your muscles. So this might be why you feel a little bit tired or a bit sore after a run. Your body after the run then gets to work using its natural healing system in order to repair them and make your muscles that bit stronger before you set off on your next run. It's this adaptation in terms of both muscle repair and cellular energy production that helps you get fitter and stronger overall. That is 5k done for me. I think what we've proved here is that our bodies are doing a lot whilst we run 5k. And if you want a bit more 5k action, check out this video now to see how Sarah and Andy get on when they try to pace 25 runners to a sub 25 minute 5k PB. Mm -hmm.